Welcome back to Teaching Orchestra. We're here in the teaching lab, and today we're going to be talking about how the left hand affects your E string tone. Now, one of the issues that we have with violinists is that instead of rotating the shoulder to access the E string, sometimes they tilt the wrist. So Hayu is going to demonstrate what it's like to rotate his elbow backwards to get to the E string, instead of turning the wrist which is going to affect your finger angles, your motion arm, and all, all of that stuff to where you're not getting adequate pressure and your tuning's not going to be very accurate and you're not probably going to have enough pressure to make the string resonate. So what we're going to do is a basic exercise where we set up our instruments in a playing position. We're going to practice putting one, two, three, four fingers down on the A string and then we're going to rotate the shoulder, one, two, three, four, on the E string. Okay, rotate back, one, two, three, four, on the A string. Rotate, one, two, three, four, on the E string. You can do this with a metronome, you can do this with music, Bob Phillips style, you can put on Rocky or something and have them do it. Um, and for younger ensembles, age-appropriate ensembles, that can make your beginner classes a lot more fun. For high school students, uh, it can be kind of cringy, so know your audience and know how to apply that effectively. But right now, we're going to do it unassisted with no metronome, and we're going to use a basic accountability exercise where our students partner up and they coach each other using peer coaching. So we're going to have Hayu go first, and he's just going to um, set, set up his fingers one, two, three, four on the A string, one, two, three, four on the D string, and Anushri is going to help coach Hayu. And Anushri is going to be watching his arm angle, making sure that his wrist is straight. He's going to be making sure that our fingers are round and that we have tabletops up here. And maybe she might check that the thumb is staying up in the generally the same spot, not squeezing, not over rotating with the fourth finger or something like that. And so he's just gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keeping those fingers tucked. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then after a little while that, we give a chance for Nushri to give some comments. Um, right now, since there's just two of them, it's a little awkward, so we're not gonna do this on film. But then after we're done with that group, we switch it around to where the B group is gonna do the same thing. Now this is a little tricky because the angle is gonna be a little different. So you might have your players turn towards each other so that they can see what's going on. So one, two, three, four on the A string. One, two, three, four on the E string. Checking for that rotation. Checking for those tabletops. So again, it's a great accountability measure that we can put into place having students coach each other. That creates more teachers in the classroom and more accountability so they can work with each other. And I'm telling you that uh, the person that's doing the coaching is learning more than the person being coached because they're seeing what to do or what not to do. By looking for those details, it makes them a better player. In the next video, we're going to talk about seated Eastern positions and some difficulties that we could have because of the way we're sitting. We'll see you next time.